Each year we encourage high school seniors who have a passion for film and TV to apply for the STN Student of the Year Scholarship. A group of judges review each of the applicants, and I can tell you this is a very difficult process because inevitably each of our applicants are outstanding and worthy of the STN Student of the Year Award. The winner is provided, and, and this person will get this shortly, a check for $1,000. They're flown to wherever we are from wherever they live um, to speak at this uh, opening ceremonies. This year, uh, Justin Chenette, uh, he is a 2009 graduate of the Thornton Academy in Saco, Maine. He began his anchoring career at the age of 12 as a co-anchor of his middle school news program. In high school, he became the first freshman to be accepted into his school's advanced TV production class, and his resume is very impressive as he created and produced programs throughout his high school broadcasting career, even interviewing, and you can imagine what a challenge this is, as many as 50 politicians for a program he produced called The Issue. Please welcome the 2008-2009 STN Student of the Year, Justin Chenette. <laughs> Good morning, STN. There we go. I like that enthusiasm. As you know, I'm Justin Chenette, and I'm the Student Television Network Student of the Year. I'm from a little town of Saco, Maine. Are there anybody out here that's from Maine? Represent. Woo! I like it. So when I first got the call from STN, I couldn't believe it. I thought they had the wrong number or something. I thought it was like a Verizon commercial. Can you hear me now? Good, I can't wait. So it really validated for me that I was on the right path in life. But that's not why I'm talking to you today. I'm not here to stand up here and give you my whole backstory. That would take too long because my resume is seven pages long. I'm here to talk about us. We are the future. We are the ones that are going to have to take up all the problems of our parents' generation, what they left us, and solve them ourselves. Now, as television journalists, whether you are in front of the camera or behind the scenes, it will be our responsibility to hold current leaders accountable for their actions and inactions, what they say and what they don't say. We have to be the watchdogs of government. As a whole, the local and even national media have dropped the ball with making government accountability a center point in the journalism world. So we have to take up the mantle because again, we are the future. We are all here at the STN convention for a reason. You would not be here if you didn't have an interest in television or journalism or some related field. And there are many fields to shoot off from, especially now that we have defined, redefined what journalism means today. It's very broad, more broad than in years past with the whole concept of media convergence. We are in a nearly a transition mode, as you're seeing newspapers across the country either going out of business or moving to the online medium. How we watch television is even changing with the advent of downloadable podcasts and episodes right, the, uh, right at the palm of your hand, which is really cool. By the time you graduate college, the rough patches of this transition will hopefully, cross your fingers, will be over, and then it'll be time for you to run with it. Hopefully me too. Uh -huh cross your fingers on that one. But how, how do you get to that point? The point where you know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, Justin, I'm more concerned about getting through today and this week, let alone five to 10 years from now. But you can't expect to get anywhere in life if you don't know where you're going. It would be fair to say that not everybody in this room is 100% sure that they have found their true calling in life. I didn't know where I was going in life until my sophomore year of high school, and even that is a little early for people. If you had asked me freshman year, would I be standing in front of you all as the student of the year, preparing to venture into the field of broadcasting, I would have looked at you like you had five heads. What are you talking about? At the time, I knew I, had, I liked doing elements of journalism and television production, but I wasn't completely sure that I wanted to do it for the rest of my life, because that's a little scary, right? Rest of your life, you better make sure. So I wanted to test it out. So I did everything from host shows to direct and produce them. I really wanted to fully invest my time into taking an interest that I had and fully testing it and vetting the process. Come to find out, after this experience and this experimentation, I found that I had a passion for broadcast journalism. The point here is I experienced what I like to do based on my interests, 
that I developed the skills based on those experiences and discovered my passion in the process. This went against the grain, as I was told by countless individuals at my high school that I had plenty of time. Oh, you're young, plenty of time to figure this stuff out. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The fact of the matter is that couldn't be farther from the truth. You do not have an unlimited amount of time. Every year, life seems to go by a little bit faster and a little bit faster than the last. You do not have, again, an unlimited amount of time. We're only here for a short amount of time, so make the most of it. Before you know it, you're going to be looking in the mirror and be like, Oh my God, I have gray hair. Where did the years go? I'm already looking in the mirror. Oh my goodness, it's changing. Um, <laughs> so I might be a little exaggerating here, but the sooner you know what the right path is for you to take, it will be easier for you in the long run. And make sure it's the right path for you. Not necessarily the right path for your parents, or your guidance counselor, or even your friends. This is your life. I'll use this analogy. You are the driver in the car of life on the highway of self-discovery. Ooh, philosophical, right? Yeah, okay. Let me repeat that just in case you were falling asleep. You are the driver in the car of life on the highway of self-discovery. Meaning no one can live your life besides you. You have to be your number one advocate because once you're out in the real world, it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog world. While there are people that can assist you along the way, you have to realize that not everybody is going to greet you with open arms like I do at the registration desk, okay? There we go. You are going to face hard challenges, but with a positive attitude and a strong self-confidence, the world is your oyster or any other food item that you like, okay? I like coffee ice cream. Anybody? Okay. There we go. Now, once you've chosen a path, you'll be able to set long-term goals because you have an end goal in mind and can set specific tasks and steps along the way in order to achieve that goal. Some of you may already be at this point and are looking at me like, yeah, I, I know this stuff, Justin. Um, you know, you've gone through the steps that I just laid out and now you know for sure. But for those of you who don't, the only way to know for sure is to try your hand at everything. And while you're trying to find that niche, you will have to experience, you'll get that experience in many different positions. As you come to find out in your programs, there's a lot of them. Camera people, in front of the camera, behind the scenes. There's so many different people, and those skills will serve you very well later in life. Especially, again, with this hot whole idea of media convergence. Skills pay the bills. That was a phrase back in 2007 at this convention. Skills pay the bills. Just remember that. So the more skills you obtain now and in college, the more marketable you're going to be in getting a job, which is obviously why we need that. <laughs> Especially in this economic downturn. Okay, so let's say that you've listened to your heart, you've followed your interest, you've discovered your passion, and developed your skills. Now what? What do I do with all of this? Well, now is the time to package all of that into a nice contained image. Think of yourself as a brand. In order for potential employers to know about you, your skills, your passion, you have to self-promote. You could be the equivalent of Albert Einstein of your craft, but if nobody knows about you, it doesn't do you any good. I'll give you an example. Ever since I discovered my passion for broadcast journalism, I've been very strategic in the projects and activities I've undertaken. Uh, it doesn't look good. If it doesn't look good on my resume, I don't do it. It's, I'm very, again, very strategic. This is why my resume is over seven pages long at 18. Not because I filled it with fluff, because that's really easy to do. You sign up for a club or activity, and you're like, I'm a member. That's member in name only. It's nice to have a position, but if you don't do anything, it means absolutely nothing. Okay? So I generally put in that effort in hundreds of hours of work each year while in high school in order to obtain that. In addition, I created my own website, justinschnett.com. It's a plug, self-promoting. Where people can go and view video clips of my work, my resume, pictures, read my bio, and contact me view, uh, via numerous social networking sites. There's a lot of them out there, by the way. Um, 
Heck, I'm even in the process of writing and publishing my first book discussing my experiences in journalism and in politics, which is basically a walking resume. Yes, I just did this motion. Okay, I just want to let you know. Okay, the bottom line is you have to think of yourself as your own public relations person. What do you want your image of your brand to be perceived by potential employers and members of your community? This could be as simple as being vigilant of what you post on Facebook and YouTube. Instead of posting a video of you partying it up at some club, why not post a video demo reel of your best work? Exactly. Come on. Yeah. You know it. You know it. Yeah, all those blackmail tapes, I would erase them right now. Okay, the more emphasis you put on, on marketing your brand and getting your name out there, the more people are going to recognize you and get your name out there. Hopefully more stations are going to want to hire you. They'll contact you. Hey, I want you to work for me. Extra viewers, extra money. Okay? That's a key point. Whether you're in front or behind the camera. I believe in each and every one of you. I may have not met every person, though at the registration desk it gets a little crazy, but I will say this, I, I really love to meet each and every one of you, but I do believe in you. I really, really do. The fact is you, just being here is a proven testament to your commitment to quality video and to journalism. As the student of the year, I make this commitment to you. If you ever need something, whether it's a question about TV or journalism, or need help figuring out which college to apply for, though I'm a little biased in that regard because I'm from Linden State College, again that's a plug, and uh, I think it's one of the best schools in the country for broadcast journalism, but there's a lot out there. I've researched for three years, so if you need unbiased, because I'm a journalist, you know, I can give that to you. Or maybe you need assistance in determining how to develop your skills in a certain area, or how to apply your skills where there may be limited opportunity in your community, because not all of us have a big budget at our television station. I remember duct taping equipment together and smacking it to get it to work. And yet I'm standing here in front of you. So it's not about money, it's about skills and about your passion. The point is, I'm here for you. My door is always open, even when a new student of the year is going to be chosen in a few months. I implore you to use me in any which way. Use me as a resource, even if it's just wanting to talk on a personal level. Yes, I know, you can laugh at that. Okay. My information is in the packets that you all receive, but again, you can visit my website, justinchanette.com, look me up on Facebook, add me as a friend. I'd love to talk with each and every one of you. And of course, throughout the convention, I'm going to be running around like a crazy person as an intern, you know, a chicken without my head, you know, sort of thing. So, but if you holler at me, just be like, hey, I may come running, but in the opposite direction. But <laughs> I will definitely try to meet with you if you want to, okay? So. Here are the key points, really quick, because I know they're going to like cut me off soon. It's just like the Academy Awards, they're going to start the music, <laughs> wrap it up, okay? So, so here's the key point, so if you're falling asleep, you know, wake up, and if you have somebody next to you, just nudge them, they'll come alive, okay? Remember, discover your passion and have the courage to fulfill your dreams. I'm Justin Schnett and I approve this message, enjoy the convention, have a magical experience! <laughs> test on three. Let's shout that website address out. One, two, three, justinchanette.com. Thank you very much, Justin.